everyone and welcome back to another Sunday vlog. So this week I thought I would just talk to you about my assignment because I don't want to keep repeating myself on what I've been doing on placement. Nothing's really happened that's been exciting that I can share with you this week. So I thought because I'm doing my assignment submission right now this second, I thought I would talk you through that and the process I go through before I do that and what I've been doing in my assignment. So this was an assignment on policy and politics and to be fair when I heard this title I thought oh my god this is gonna be really boring to write I'm not sure how I feel about this but actually looking at the assignment brief and then when I started it I really got into this assignment it took me probably I think three days to write the first draft and most of that time was finding all the references and backing up all of my assignments. Most of the time, writing assignments does get taken up by referencing, Harvard referencing. Um, it does take a lot, a lot of time and it's probably the bulk, probably about 90% of my assignment writing, I reckon, is referencing. But that's not for everybody. I just, I do take a long time to do my references and make sure that everything's correct and that I've referenced properly according to the Harvard referencing. I'm really, really proper anal about these things, so um, it might not take you as long to do that, but that's just, it takes me a long time. So for this assignment, we had to pick a topic which is a current healthcare situation and what the, basically the policies around it, the government's response to it, how it's gonna impact nursing and the future, things like that. So I decided go, easy route I always pick the easy route please 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 don't overcomplicate things for yourself don't make it hard of yourself always go the easy route so I went staff shortages because it's easy and there's so much information out there about staff shortages there's patient ratios there's the government response there's the long-term plan that's just been put into place in January really really current for this assignment there's so much being out there for it I knew I wouldn't struggle and because I've experienced this firsthand of how short the wards are I knew it would be quite simple to write so I I went with that basically to as to pick my topic for it so upon my research on staff shortages what I found was actually quite interesting I found out a couple of things that I didn't know so firstly the reason when you look back when you sort of do the root cause analysis which is what I was trying to get to was first the removal of the diploma back in the day when it was diploma and the degree so the removal of the diploma nursing rates dropped then we had the removal of the bursary, massive drop in nursing applications because of that. Then we've got Brexit, another knock-on effect. Then we have got the horse fees and things like that that have been put in place. And everything is just a massive knock-on effect and there's just a mass shortage at the minute. There's something like 40,000 vacancies right now across the board and it doesn't look like it's going to get any better. So <laughs> that was my main thing that I found. but. We, I sort of knew that anyway, I had an idea about it, but when I looked into the government and actually look into the reason why they removed the bursary, that was quite interesting because Jeremy Hunt put it out there that he wanted to create more spaces for student nurses. So he wanted to create more spaces on the nursing degree program. And he said, if he cuts the bursary, it's gonna put more money into funding 10,000 more places extra for the nursing degree, which obviously isn't going to work, Jeremy. Sorry about that. <laughs> I knew that when I heard about the scrap of the bursary. But um, the second part of the reason that the government wanted to do this and scrap the bursary is because it costs the government a lot more to keep two accounts open. So that there's the NHS bursary that used to go through the NHS bursary boss system. And then there was the student loan where you get your maintenance loan through the student finance government system. So two separate systems, two separate pots of funding that you can get as a student nurse. Um, and it costs the government a lot more money to keep two accounts open. I know. So they cut one and just wanted it all through one system, which is the student finance government. So everything went through there. So that was the second half of it. They wanted to save money. They wanted to save themselves, basically. And they thought that by doing that, it might create some more places. But you can't create more places if there's not the bums to sit in the seats, so to speak. <laughs> So that was really interesting because I didn't know the money side of things. So it was really interesting to look into that. 
And then I looked into how much expenditure there was to the NHS on hiring agency and bank nurses. Between April 2016 and April 2017, there was an expenditure of almost a million pounds on agency and bank nurses. A million pounds? I know. Shocking. And then I also found some really good research on the effect of agency nurses. So when an agency nurse isn't familiar with the care round, continuity of care goes down and patient safety sort of can be impacted as a result. I understand this isn't for everybody. I love agency nurses. The agency nurses that I've worked with are really, really good. So this is not putting anybody down. But some research that looked into that was that there is that dis disturbance of continuity of care. And not only that, but the trust that I worked at, because the medications were all on a system, computerised system, and agency nurses don't have the login, they couldn't do medications. And there was other skills that they couldn't do because they were agency and they weren't trained in that trust to do certain things. So it was really difficult because then it doubles the qualified nurse's workload because then a qualified nurse has to take on that bay of patients, medications and everything. And there is like a little bit of a disturbance with that. So even though they've got the numbers of staff up because they've hired agency nurses or bank staff, it's not good quality. So the quantity's there but quality isn't there and again no offence to agency nurses but this is just what I saw and what happened and agency nurses are brilliant, they're a massive help but there are certain things they can and can't do sometimes which is, it's not their own fault, it's just local trust policies and procedures and all of that and guidelines which is fair enough but um, yeah so that was really interesting to look into that and seeing the agency nurses and how that affects care and patient safety or it can do not always it can do and then i looked into the legal law legislation so in wales they have legal law of staffing put in place in wales so they have to have a legal amount of nurses working um, each day per patients and we don't have anything like that in england and the RCN, as a result, are putting in place, um, I can't remember what it's called, but they've done a form that you can fill in and you can sort of write a letter to your MP or the government to sort of have this law put in place where somebody is going to be accountable now for having the legal amount of staff nurses or putting in place the amount of staff nurses needed for that day per patient ratio according to NICE guidelines, things like that. Does that make sense? I don't know if I've explained that properly. I'm really sorry. But basically, something's, they want to do something in England where they sort out the amount of nursing to patients to protect patient safety as a result. However, my personal opinion on this is you can have all the legislations and legal things put in place. So let's just say, okay, legally you have to have one nurse per, let's say, eight patients, just as a ratio of one nurse to eight patients. Legally, that's put in place. However, if you physically haven't got the nurses, how are you going to do that? If you physically can't get the staff, how are you going to do that? You can't suddenly magic nurses from nowhere because there's a law being put in place. It's, it's not possible. It's, and I don't know how it's going to work because, again, if they've put this law in place, agency nurses are going to be called and things like that. But... Not only that, just to as a critical analysing bit, there was a new rule, it was called the agency rule that was put into place 2016 where NHS is actually restricted on how much they can spend on agency nurses. So if they're restricted on hiring the staff to come into place to cover the staff shortages, how are we going to solve this? So they're going to put a legal law in place to have the right amount of nurses However, we can't get the nurses. So if you can't physically get the nurses, how are you going to have the number of nurses? Those legal laws aren't, they're not going to be met, basically. And what happens then? Because that technically isn't anybody's fault. I don't think it's anybody's fault. There's, it's just a fact. There's not enough nurses. There's too many patients. People are ageing. People are living longer. And there's not enough nurses to account for that. Simple as that. So I'm not 100% sure on... What's going to happen? I don't know what the result's going to be because it's still ongoing. I don't know what the answer is, but I think part of the answer to the staff shortages is to pay student nurses for placements because student nurses really struggle. Fair enough, keep the course fees in place. 
because all courses should be paid for, whatever. But as student nurses, we physically work 40 hours a week for free. Well, technically now we pay ourselves. Well, you guys pay yourselves. If you're a new student coming in, you've got to pay for the course. You've got to get out the student loans and everything to fund yourself. So technically you're paying yourself to work for 40 hours. And I don't think that's okay. I think that we should be paid. Well, I mean, okay, I'm okay because I get the bursary. I think I've said this in a previous vlog. But for new students, pay them for placements, pay them for the, the hard work that they actually do. I know technically that they're super numery, they're training and all of this, but we're not really super numery. We are hands on doing things. It's the only way we learn, but at least pay us for that time because we're not going to be able to work around placements, doing 40 hours a week on placements and we need the money to pay our bills and stuff. So I think payments is going to make a massive impact if they put bring back the bursary or if they put something in place to pay students for their placements I think that'll make a massive difference um, but then again it's going to take three years to train that person to be a nurse so three years later there's still going to be a shortage either way so I don't know what the answer is basically Sorry guys, I really went off on one about staff shortages then. I did not mean to talk so long. It's probably going to be dull and boring for you. I'm so sorry about that. So yeah, so basically that is my assignment. Staff shortages and it's been really interesting to write, really interesting to read about as well. And what the government's putting in place and things like that. It's been really, really interesting. So now, now my assignment is done. I'm going to submit it to Turnitin and I'm going to show you the process right now for that. So I am here and I'm about to submit a draft copy of my assignment into what we call Turnitin, which is through our university website and this checks for any form of plagiarism. So after you've submitted it, they'll run through it and they'll check all of the university websites and submissions to see if there is any risk of plagiarism. And they will, at the end, give you a percentage of what this might be, which I'll show you in a minute. And if, as long as it's under 15%, you're okay. But anything over 15%, you have to go in and change and then resubmit it and just get it down because you don't want to be at risk of plagiarising anything. You don't want to be off this course. So just make sure you always check this if your university does it. I know our university, Birmingham City University, definitely does it. And I'm about to sh take you through how to do it right now. So this is my Turnitin screen. I'm going to click this button here which is going to allow me to choose a file to upload. I've saved my document as draft so I know it's the draft document. I'm uploading and author, yep, yeah, upload this file. So I've uploaded my file now and then save changes. Save. So it's submitted for grading. Don't panic when it says this, it's not a real grading. It's just submitted to do their checks. And then it'll like send you a little email to say that you've submitted this for check. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit here, I'm gonna refresh the page, because sometimes it takes a few minutes and sometimes it can take 24 hours. So just keep coming back and checking it and then you'll find out your result, basically. So until now, I'm just going to wait until this has finished and I will be back and let you know what my percentage is. Okay, so it's been a while now. It's been about half an hour. I'm going to go back and check and see if it has been checked. Um, submit. I think this is where I went through last time. So we'll go back. 1%. Yes. Look at that. Oh, that is what you want to see. 1%. 1% <laughs> the best I've ever got is 0% I thought there was a problem with the system so I had to recheck it because there's always something on Turnitin so once you've submitted it you've got your percentage back you can open it and click on the percentage so you can actually see where the similarity is similarity I can't speak um, so let's have a look where is the similarity here and that's it literally Nice guidelines, staffing levels, that's it. That's all I've got. Oh, I'm chuffed with that. So my work is my own work, clearly. I have proof. <laughs> so yeah, so that is Turnitin. I love it when there's a low percentage. To be honest, the highest mine's ever been is probably 7%, lowest 0%, like I said. But because, And that's because I 
type my assignment out first. I don't go onto any references. I don't look up any journals, anything like that. I type, especially if you know the subjects. That's why I, in assignments, I go for what I know, something that I'm good on, something that I've got a bit of knowledge about already. So I type a rough estimate of what I think and, what, and then I go and find the evidence to back up what I'm saying. Sometimes you do have to chop and change things because legislation's changed since, um, I mean, it was, for example, back when I worked in elderly care homes, I haven't worked in an elderly care home for about six years now. So legislation's policies might have changed in those six years. So what I think that I know might have changed, if that makes sense. So if I write something and then I go back and I see that there's an update or something else has been put in place, then that's when I'll be like, OK, I need to change this so it actually meets the new legislations and guidelines and policies, procedures, all of that. And that's it. But I don't know many people that do their assignments like that, but that's just the way I like to do it because I don't want to play dries. I don't want to read something and think, OK, I'll just adjust that. So, yeah, 1%, I'm chuffed. If you have Turnitin where you are, if you've put it through Turnitin where you are, let me know how you get on. Do you like Turnitin? I absolutely love it. Let me know. Let me know your lowest ever percentage. Have you ever got 0%? Maybe there was a problem with the system at the time. But, yeah, let me know. And, yeah. So, that is it for now. Thank you so much for tuning in, as always. Thanks for taking your time out to come and watch these vlogs. And I hope they're a benefit. So I shall see you later.